Hello students, welcome to today's class. This video on heredity and evolution is brought to you by AT Square Crystal Clear Concepts. In this module, we discuss the mechanisms by which variations are created and inherited and what are the long-term consequences of the accumulation of these variations under the head of evolution. But first, to understand any of this, we need to discuss the term heredity. We have all been told at some point that we have our mother's eyes or our father's nose. Generally, when we meet people, we compare their features with those of their parents. For example, she looks like her mother or his eyes are like those of his father. Why this resemblance or similarities? Because every one of us receives traits or distinctive features from one's parent in the form of genes. This is heredity. It is simply the transmission of genetically based characteristics from parents to offspring. A very common phrase, like big it's like, serves as the principle of heredity. It simply means that there is a strong similarity between the offspring and their parents. If we take a look at the pictures, we see the young one of a cat resembles its parent. Similarly, the young one of a dog resembles its parent. Thus we say, like big it's like. But if you pay close attention, I have used the term resemble or similar instead of identical. That is, the young one of a cat resembles the parent or is similar to its parent but is not identical to them. This brings us to the point that although like begets like, yet there are variations. Variations refers to the differences among individuals or simply variations are differences observed between two organisms of same type. All organisms produce their own kind from reproduction but the offspring are never identical to their parents. Some differences, however small it may be, is found in them. But if we inherit genes from our parents, then why don't we exactly look like them? The reason for this is that the offspring is a combination of its two parents. In multicellular organisms, the mode of reproduction being sexual, the daughter individual receives half the number of chromosomes from each parent, which means half from the mother and half from the father. As we can see in the picture, this results in variations. Once again, variation refers to the differences among individuals. In this picture, we see variation in eye color, variation in leaf shape and size, variation in the color of beetles, that is the brown one and the green ones, and variation in the color of grapes. Now we discuss the two terms, that is character and traits, that are often reciprocated as synonyms. However, such con conclusions is not true and they differ. Any heritable feature is a character. The alternate forms of a character are called traits. For example, eye color is a character of an organism while blue, brown and hazel are traits. If we discuss these two terms in relation to the inheritance in humans, we inherit thousands of characters from our parents who in turn had inherited them from their parents. Here is a list of character and traits. Now, let us take a closer look at certain characters and the respective traits. Character, color of the eyes, traits, brown, green, black, blue, etc. Character, tongue rolling. Traits, rolling of tongue and no rolling. Character, hand use. Traits, right-handedness or left-handedness. Character, ear lobe. Traits, free or attached. All the examples we have seen are passed from one generation to the next or are heritable. Such traits like eye color, skin color, tongue rolling, height, etc. are called inherited traits. Inherited trait is any characteristic that is passed from one generation to the next. In contrast to this, there are acquired traits. An acquired trait is a physical characteristic of an organism that is not passed down to offspring genetically. It is not coded in the organism's DNA and is simply a product of the environment's influence on the organism. Example of acquired traits are children learning to read, a horse learning to stay away from an electric fence, larger muscle size from exercise, etc. We have been saying for a very long time now that characters passed from parents to offspring. Now about it's time to find in which form and discuss chromosomes, the carriers of heredity and several other aspects related to it. 
Chromosome is a thread-like structure of nucleic acids and proteins found in the nucleus of most living cells carrying genetic information in the form of genes or simply they are thread-like structures that carry hereditary information. Chromosomes are found in the nucleus but are visible only when a cell nucleus is about to divide. Let us go through a picture of nucleus and discuss its various parts to get a better understanding of where chromosomes are really are. We know that the cell nucleus is bound by a membrane called the nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope. There are nuclear pores to allow the flow of molecules into and out of the nucleus, nucleoplasm, the gelatinous substance within the nuclear envelope, the nucleolus which helps to synthesize ribosomes and then there are chromatin fibers. The chromatin condenses to form chromosomes during cell division. Now, we know that the chromatin fibers present in the nucleus condense to form chromosomes. The chromosomes, on the other hand, are composed of long strands of DNA tightly wrapped around proteins. Now, it is the DNA that contains genes. Basically, gene is a piece of DNA that contains the instructions to make a specific protein. Hence, we can say that Genes are the specific parts or DNA segments of a chromosome which determine the hereditary characteristics. Now, we discuss the chromosome number. Chromosome number refers to the characteristic number of chromosomes contained in the cell nucleus of a given species. The chromosome number is constant for the individuals of a species and each body cell has the same number. Humans have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes. Gorilla have 48 chromosomes or 24 pairs of chromosomes. Now, out of the 23 pairs humans have, the chromosomes numbered 1 to 22 have identical chromosomes as you can see in the picture and these are categorized as autosomes meaning same chromosomes. But the 23rd pair is different and its chromosomes are called sex chromosomes which are designated as X and Y. The Y chromosome of males is much smaller than the X. The sex chromosomes are also referred to as an allosome. The chromosome pairs numbered 1 to 22 are also referred to as the homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes are chromosome pairs of the same length, centromere position and staining pattern with genes for the same characteristic. One homologous chromosome is inherited from the organism's mother, the other from the organism's father. As we can see in the picture, the two chromosomes are of the same length, the centromere position is the same and the staining pattern with genes is the same as well as for the same characteristic. That means the gene for eye color is present in the same position in both of them, the gene for enzyme A is present in the same position in both of them and the gene for cytochrome C is also present in the same position. One duplicated chromosome has, been, has come from the mother while another one comes from the father.